Hello, and welcome to InLog. InLog is a powerful Unity logging framework based upon the open source InLog project. It has an advanced rule-based system that can route your logs to any included or custom logger. The included loggers range from an in-game logger to a remote logger. InLog also provides dynamic control of the format and content of your log messages. InLog takes logging to another level, so let's get started. This is a review of how Enlog is installed and configured. To begin, download and install Enlog from the Unity Asset Store. It will be placed here in the AI Unity directory along with other AI Unity products. Inside the Enlog directory, you will find the Enlog manual and README. To control Enlog, access the Enlog control panel located under the Tools menu. Let's dock it here. Enlog is configured with an XML file located here that can be added and removed. The contents of the XML file is viewable here and it can be directly edited. However, it is recommended that you use the GUI to modify the XML. So let's review the various settings. The source determines whether the InLog source code is used or the DLL. The code allows you to investigate the inner workings of InLog. However, the DLL is recommended as it enables Unity console double clicks to take you directly to the logging statement in your IDE. Platforms determines which platforms InLog will be built on. Unselected platforms will have InLog completely compiled out of the build, which yields a performance improvement. Build levels determines which build levels will exist in your final build. Again, this improves performance as logging statements on unselected build levels will be compiled out of the build. Internal levels assist in debugging InLog itself and you can choose among the standard levels. Your logging assert statements can raise exceptions if you choose this option. The test logger is a very useful feature as it allows you to test your configuration. Here is a preview of the logging statement that will be executed with the play button. Let's try it now. We will refer back to this result in a later segment. Here you can specify the name of the logger, the game object associated with the logger, the levels to log, the message of the log statements, and if you wish, the logger to raise an exception. InLog is a targets and rules based system. What that means is rules are matched against your logging statements. If a rule matches, it will specify the destination target of the message. Let's begin by analyzing the available targets. The file target allows you to specify a text file as the destination of your logging statements. The game console target is a prefab you place in your project to allow you to debug at runtime. Use the email target to have certain messages sent via email. The memory target allows you to place your logging statements in a memory array. Use the method call target to have your logging statements call a method. The inlog viewer target allows you to remotely view your log messages using the sentinel viewer. You can use the null target to drop log messages. The Unity console target sends messages to the Unity console and will be discussed in a moment. The web service target allows you to send messages to a web service. These targets are covered in the InLog documentation and many have dedicated video tutorials. You can wrap a target to provide functionality like buffering or repeating. Lastly, you can group targets to provide abilities like randomization or round robin. Let's examine the Unity console in detail. The target name is what rules use to specify a target. By using unique names, you can use a target multiple times with different configurations. The layout determines the contents of your logging statements. The layout property is common to almost all targets. You can add any text or formatting to the layout. In addition, Unity's rich text markup is available. You can also add variables to your layout. Here we are specifying the debug level, the call site, a new line, and the message of your logging statement. You can find and insert variables by clicking on the plus sign. In the Unity console, you can see the results of the current layout. Here you see various colors and the variables debug level, call site, and message. Down below you can see where new line was inserted. Let's now review the rules. Rules are matched using the logger name and namespace. 
Here we are defining a default rule with wildcards that will always match. However, you may wish to specify a particular rule for a given namespace or name. You can also add a wildcard to text to match a group of namespaces or names. When a rule does not match, it will fall through to the next rule. If a rule matches, the target specifies the target handler of the log message. The levels and platforms will filter out messages on unselected levels and platforms. Final indicates that processing should stop on a matching rule. If unchecked, matching will continue on to the next rule. Enable simply determines if this rule is enabled. The targets and rules can be configured in countless ways. We will take a look at one possibility which you may find helpful. Let's say you wish to have very detailed logging for the code currently under development. For other code, you only wish to receive critical messages. Let's also assume our developmental code is under the My Namespace namespace to match the test logger. Let's begin by adjusting our first rule to match the test logger namespace. My namespace. Let's also change the target color to blue for demonstration purposes. Now let's add a rule for our critical messages. This rule will match all logging statements and will only log on the critical levels. Now let's be sure to check final on our first rule so that when it matches my namespace it will not continue on to the second rule. Now let's add an additional target of type Unity Console. This will have the standard coloring and let's call this critical, Unity Console critical. And our critical rule will target this Unity Console. So now with this configuration, the My Developmental Log Messages will hit the first rule and this target and will be colored blue. All messages outside my namespace will fall through to this default rule and will only log on the error warning and fatal levels with standard coloring. Let's try it now. You can see we hit the first rule and we're logging both debug and error and it has been colored blue. Now if we were to change the namespace, let's say other on our test logger and hit play, you can see that only the error message was displayed since the second rule filtered out all other debug levels. Thank you. This is a tutorial on the usage of nlog. It is assumed that you've already installed nlog and configured it with the nlog control panel. We will begin by opening an example scene. In the scene you will find a test game object and an associated nlog example script. In the script you will see the logger API is similar to that found in Unity. It does have additional levels available and it does accept the format string syntax. Each logger is associated with a name and a game object. This occurs during its instantiation. If you pass the script instance as is recommended and shown here, the name of your logger will be that of the class name and the game object will be the game object in which the script is instantiated. You do have the ability through overloads to explicitly state the name and game object, but we will stick with the current instance as recommended. Here we have demonstrated the intuitive and simple use of nlog. Now the nlog control panel can give you power and flexibility to your logging. Thanks and happy logging. To learn more, please visit AI Unity website. You can also explore the featured products below. Be sure to subscribe to stay current on all AI Unity products. Thank you, and stay tuned to this product's playlist to complete your training.